Societal Benefits of a Strong Education System by Group 12 A strong education system should create a healthier society. A healthy society can exist with many different kinds of education systems, but we believe that educated people make our communities, governments, and individuals healthier. In our case, we are talking about making our traditional system stronger and why systems similar to ours can make a healthy society. The Canadian education system is pretty good as it is. We rank very well in terms of reading, maths, and sciences, even though we aren't at similar levels of spending per student. From this, we are able to say that the money we do spend must be pretty efficient. Even though math, science, and reading isn't the only important thing we can get from an education system, we appear to do well in the most basics of what a good education system is. We would like to talk about the bigger role that education can have on affecting society. There are many things that people could say make a good society. It's hard to first agree on the most important parts of what makes a good society, let alone the formula to create a near-perfect society. So for our presentation, we are going to talk about three things that we think contribute to a healthy society. We picked these in hopes that these ideas would be most accepted and neutral. We chose life expectancy, adult literacy, and crime rate. A high life expectancy is pretty important for a functioning society. It can oftentimes mean that our health care is working to get the best care for our kids and other vulnerable people. The ability to read and write, especially as an adult, is something that is required for almost every kind of job there is in Canada. For an individual that isn't getting the education required to read and write, we'll struggle to do well in our society. First, a nation that has lower literacy rates, this means their labor pool is more likely considered an unskilled labor force, which makes progress and innovation less likely to happen. Crime rate is pretty straightforward. Crime is an indicator on whether people are getting their basic needs or not. A high crime rate means that society is failing to educate and care for more people, whereas the lower the crime rate, the more likely people are getting their needs met. More education reduces criminal behavior for the following reasons. More future work opportunities are available. This leads to individuals interacting with a different set of people in a different environment. They feel they have more to lose. Employment, income, relationships, and social status. The correlation between low education rates and incidences of violent crime and theft have been proven in Germany. High school dropouts have two times the incarceration rates of high school graduates. We found and believe that a strong education system requires six basic things. These six pillars are what we consider to make or break an education system. They are pretty straightforward, but in terms of continual assessment, we are looking at both assessing the students and the entire system put in place. Now we will explain how a strong education system can make our society better in terms of our three criteria. Leadership. In an article written in 2000 by Ted Lee and Reynolds, they say all the studies they have looked at on the subject of leadership stress the essential nature of strong leadership. Strong leadership creates a safe school environment. This type of leadership generates motivation in a school for students and staff. There are studies correlating the effect between good leadership and school effectiveness. Leadership with a focus on community building and sharing of ideas has been found to be beneficial for the learning climate for both students and teachers. Having direction in an education system is important. This is the place where the community or province decides what we are going to work together towards. Things such as health and knowledge are things that we think are important. One example of this is having a health curriculum in schools. We are trying to teach kids how to be healthier individuals. We can do that by addressing mental health and sex education so everyone gets exposure to these topics, regardless of their background. With this particular example, you can see how we are trying to give people the tools to live happier and healthier lives. Goals for students is something that is required for the education system to be impactful. 
Trying to teach kids the curriculum with nothing to work towards is just asking for disinterest and failure. Teaching kids how to make goals and how to follow up after making them gives them a good foundation in the future when life starts being a bit more long-term. Having kids remain interested in school will help retention, which will lower dropout rates, and children will be more likely to be fully literate by the time they are ready to enter university or college, which will ensure they can get the education they need to reach their full potential. When societal changes occur, schools must be able to adapt quickly in order to provide students with the most up-to-date information of society. When educators can easily adjust to societal change, it benefits the student's knowledge and it can help ensure a safe environment for everyone. It may really help to push the students in the right direction on what kind of citizen they should be in society by supporting things like political involvement, social equality, and environmental sustainability. Schools who adapt to social change can help encourage students to become more open, thoughtful, and responsible citizens who are ready to apply these qualities in today's society. They will carry their goals and ideals with them when they graduate and use them to make the world a better place. Students must find a way to feel engaged and connected to the material they are studying. Simply teaching them facts from a textbook will not secure their understanding of the material. Teaching students thought, not content, allows for the students to be able to develop critical thinking skills. This allows students to really absorb the information to get a better understanding of what they are being taught and then form their own opinions. Students will not benefit in the real world and in society if they are just taught from a textbook. When they are able to produce their own views on the subject, it demonstrates how much they have learned and what they have taken away from the lesson. It's sometimes good to be able to recite material from a book, but when it comes to really teaching students information on the material, it's best if they can create their own understanding of the subject through their own critical thinking. If students can improve their critical thinking skills, they will be more prepared for their future role in society. Critical thinkers gain a deeper understanding of themselves, their motivations, and their objectives. They can improve their situation and promote personal growth and happiness if they can deduce information to locate the most significant pieces and apply them to their lives. Cohesive staff. Effective leadership is connected to the building of a cohesive staff. A cohesive staff has the following components. Attitudes and values are shared. Joint efforts are made to build on the teaching practices, critical to the making of an effective school. Collaboration among school staff creates a consistent atmosphere so students feel secure and confident in what is expected of them. Data has shown schools where staff work together to achieve goals and collaborate on issues have better student outcomes than schools where this is not the case. Continual assessments is basically just used to make sure the other five pillars are going on track. It can also be used to see if it's the direction we want to go in. The assessment of leadership and staff can ensure we have the right people in charge. Assessing is vital to any part of any system. Without it, it is very easy for systems to be filled with unqualified or corrupt people, for curriculums to be getting detrimental results, and for unnecessary spending to go unchecked.